Oh, oh, dang. Oh, heal, 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 heal. Okay. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay on the beautiful map Anorian in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 between Gondor and Isengard versus Mordor and Gondor. So it's a very good matchup, can go either way. Uh, for me personally, the Gondor Isengard faction is a bit strong of a combination, especially at the beginning of the game, because Warchan is just too powerful. It's much better than Eye of Sauron, especially on those soldiers. It will be hard to contest. And Mordor is sending one of the orcs forward. That's pretty aggressive, but I like it, you know. I personally believe that offense is the best defense in almost every single situation. So, the Gondor player will be in a bad spot. Because what he's doing is he's sending both the soldiers forward and using his Hobbit Peregrine took to defend his ally settlement. That means this farm, very soon, slowly but surely, will be taken, this, taken down. And that's the only farm the Gondor player has on the field. That means much more expensive Gondor Knights. Pralinko has been used offensively. I, demolishing the building, very important to deny experience because you don't want to get this enemy soldiers to level 2. That's going to be a nightmare situation. It might be GG right before the game started. Smart move from the purple Gondor player splitting those units and using the shield wall formation for a bit more tankiness. The Uruks are taking care of this Lammer Mill and these two soldiers are taking care of these two Lammer Mills. That means every single one of those three will be destroyed. But luckily the Mordor player was able to get a bit more eco investment into the castle. That's gonna keep him alive. And also this is gonna be taken down. <laughs> oh, it's not good though. I mean for Gondor at least. Because he will be kind of broke now. This Gondor will have two farms under his control for cheaper uh, Gondor Knights. But this Gondor will have zero outside settlements. I mean, he will have one now. That's better than nothing. The Hobbit has to be in getting invisible. Can he do it? Yes, use the heal on him. Yeah, smart move. Very good. He was able to get cloaked just in time. That's going to deny the opening player to grab those settlements for himself. And now, the Isengard player has to defend this with the help of the Hobbit from his ally, but this, you know, the Lammermill workers, they are builders, they are not destroyers, so it will take you legit two and a half years, you know, to take care of this farm with these two workers. Okay, Peregrine took, slowly but surely, the defender of the White City. The Mordor player was able to get this, dude. He will have in total four settlements under his control. You understand how crazy this is? Like, that's a full maximum bonus of the wood bonus. It means with four of them, he will have in total 30% discount. That's crazy, by the way, you know? Like, a slaughterhouse for 350 now will only cost you 280. But a troll cage will cost you only 960. Like, Mordor will have legit the time of his life. Okay, I mean, the Orcs level 2 are also hitting very hard, by the way. I mean, again, I keep saying it because it's so important. The level advantage in this game is so important. It's massive. The difference between a level 1 and a level 2 unit is just crazy. But it's not enough, because Hobbit is also leveled. Level 3, Peregrine took the full of a took. Um, we have a Hobbit here also. He can also get cloaked. This Isengard went actually for Lords. He couldn't get the last on the creep in the middle. One part of the money has been secured, so that's pretty good. I believe he was able to get it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not... I'm, not, I'm sure, but I'm not sure. That's what I'm trying to say. English hard. Hobbit is trying to micro. Enough of this. Oh, killed one of them. One more hit. Oh, he healed him, dude. Dude, you're a hero, man. The purple gunner play. He's gonna be the MVP in my heart already. Just because he was trying, at least, to save the full of a took. But he couldn't. He couldn't. Only Ganov can save him. The farm has been taken down, uh, lots of pressure on the Isengard Gondor team, the Mordor player has reclaimed every single one of these settlements, has the troll cage building up, and very soon it will be close to be impossible for the Gondor player Isildur to destroy any of those mills. The second the trolls are entering the battlefield, they will be one of the best protectors for the settlements, and, you know, long story short, it's going to make not, it's not gonna make the life of the purple Gondor player any easier. The Isengard player will have to be the carry in this situation, but unlike in this matchup between Gondor and Isengard combination, here 
the, mo the Gondor player has to be the carry. Because what Gondor player can do with this leadership, what he can get offered by his Mordor ally, with, you know, early on the of Sauron, later on the Witch King, and then even Darkness, they can, I mean, these leaderships can make those Gondor Knights legit to raid bosses. Like a Gondor Knight with full upgrades, shields, heavy armor, forge blade, for example, with the Eye of Sauron, Witch King leadership, and Darkness leadership, they can become literally perma glorious charge moment. You know what I mean? Like, you have like such a crazy damage reduction, you can tank everything for ages and ages on end. And the only thing that can shut them down later on is the freezing rain from the Blue Isengard player. But we need to get into the fighting action. The model player will have the chance to reclaim everything very soon. Um, this Gondor is so poor still. He has still three empty big spots in his base. That's very unfortunate. This Gondor is so rich. He has full castle now for a long time. He has even forge blades and heavy armor purchase. That's the differential between the players right now. Uh, I wish there would be like a statistic, live statistic, which could show us the amount of money each player collected. But again, I cannot complain about a video game which was made back in 2004, you know? Like it's almost 20 years since then. And it's still amazing graphics. I can, I keep repeating myself, but I think for a video game which was made back in 2004, this game is actually looking pretty lit. Not gonna lie. Gollum is gonna be <laughs> slaughtered by the Uruk Pikemen. Okay, Isengard is now Pikeman on the field. It's gonna make a little bit. Oh, nice Elvin Wood, nice eye, and nice ward, a nice fight against Pikeman. Nice one, nice one, nice one. There is even also Hobbit, and you know this is so important because what this does, it gives Mordor so much time, and Mordor will have enough money to do anything he wants very very soon. Lords, level almost 5, that's good by the way, and that's one of the downsides of the gondor Isengard combination in my opinion. The only thing which is kind of bad about this combination is the lack of damage and armor leadership you will get. Because unlike Rohan, you can simply recruit Theodin King and put him next to your combos. Gondor can't do that. I mean, you have Gandalf later on, but Gandalf only gives you combat experience and armor. Both of them are not bad, but they are not as great as damage leadership, because damage is what you need when it comes to you know, kill those trolls fast enough. And for that reason, Lourdes level 5 is massive. You get permanently 60% more DPS, which can stack with your war chant for 110% DPS, and that together might give you the edge in those fe you know in those fights and turn them into your fever. I mean that's the problem, you know, because Pikes are very vulnerable even against orcs. A orc can kill the pike for me one situation. Like the pikemen in this game are so weak against swordmen. And it's Mordor untouched for the last couple of minutes. He's gonna get more and more stronger and stronger and stronger. This Gondor player, by the way, he's trying to rush Gandalf. Okay, that makes kind of sense because I believe even going for upgrades at this point of the game wouldn't do much for the Gondor player. Let's be real. There are too many trolls. And they don't care about your, you know, armor on your horses. That wouldn't change too much about anything. And realizing that, okay, and saying, you know what, I cannot recruit more Gondor Knights. I cannot upgrade them. That wouldn't give us any advantage. So I will try my best to get the best hero in the game on the field. And also, he's trying to build uh, statues, four of them, to get the hero bonus for 30% more discount. So that's gonna turn a Gandalf from 6,000 all the way to 4,200. I mean, obviously you cannot fight for the map control, that's not possible. And that's gonna be the first big base rush. I see you. Watch this. I wanna, I wanna show you guys. That's very important. But I want to also show you guys the base rush. You see? 5,400. And 4,200. You save 1,800 resources. Which will give you most of the time the chance to get him on the field way sooner. And I think a wizard arrives precisely when he means to. And that's the perfect time. Be beautiful with the pikeman Pokemon formation, by the way. Defending very nicely. And the Gondor player will have to retreat. But during all this time, and that's the one thing we gotta always keep in mind, the Mordor is untouched. He has the money and the time of his life. He has 5,000 almost in the bank, and he has plenty of trolls on the field. 
so he's ready for the defense and by the time the Isengard will be ready for a potential push, there is going to be a Witch King, who is not only gonna make those trolls, and drummer trolls tankier and stronger, but also the allies Gondonites are gonna become tankier and stronger. Okay, so the Isengard player is trying to push, um, but with two combos all alone, I don't think that's going to be a great idea. Gandalf on the field. But there is always hope in the F2 White Wizard. It has to be good for something. Yep, 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 yep. As expected, one-shotting trolls. When they have no leadership. When they have leadership later on with Drama Troll and the Witch King, it's not going to be that easy anymore. Trust me on that one. So the question is how long this Gondor player will need for his own Gandalf. Um, does he have the power points? Nope, he doesn't have the power points because Isengard player was always in time demolishing the buildings just in the perfect time to deny his opponent power points and experience and he has not the money either because he keeps spamming more and more units all the time. So it's kind of poor. Nice micro here with the level 5, you can see this highly leveled Gondor Knights with all the upgrades they can even fight against the pikemen in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And we have three combos, and Lord's level 5, and Gandalf. Now the question, boys, is can this push be enough to finish off the game? The micro is essential in this situation, okay? It's essential. It's the most important thing ever. That's the one thing you want to aim the trolls one by one. You don't want everyone to attack one troll. Because if you do that, <laughs> there are going to be 20 more trolls charging you down. So you want to attack them one by one. You want to attack and target smart. I want to see this though. That's going to be kind of risky. Uh oh, does he have Witch King? Yeah, he's cooking. Uh, he's going to be there very soon in about, um, in about 20 seconds. And that means 100% more damage and 100% more armor for the trolls. Warchan is going to be used. But these Gondor Knights, they have no upgrades. I mean, they have heavy armor. That's better than nothing. And they have also Gandalf leadership. The trolls are charging. Witch King arrived on the field. Uh-oh. The end has been covered by the Gondor player. But in, they have double land advantage. The, the Gondor Knights are charging. And the trolls are just unstoppable. Like, the Gondor Knights, they cannot play the game. They will be getting destroyed by the Witch King. The Gandalf cannot even approach them. Because for casting spells, you need to hold and stand still for a while. Which can be quite deadly for the Gandalf. Uh oh. Run, Gandalf the purple. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now we have pretty much heroes. And the Isengard army got slaughtered. It wasn't even close. Let's be real here. It wasn't even close. He's gonna try to... Oh, nice. Nice one. Nice one. I like that. Beautiful Gandalf micro. Beautiful. And kind of sloppy from Mordor. He was kind of getting catch off guard. The drama troll was too far away. The Witch King wasn't anywhere near. And now the big commitment from the Gondor Mordor team. The Witch King once again is sporting those Gondor Knights with additional damage and armor leadership. And with the shields, heavy armor, they are so tanky. But again, every single of the structure inside the Isengard castle is able to shoot. Perma damage non-stop. And there is Gandalf, you should not underestimate him. Lourdes was able to survive the big battle. And Witch King can clean the pikemen from this map. So with the Witch King, if nothing else, the Gondor Mordor team can easily get map control. And it's going to be close to be impossible for the Purple Gondor player to do anything about that. I think the best call here for the Gondor player would be, for the Purple Gondor player would be to buy the middle camp um, and recruit Faramir and Boromir for his ally. So Boromir, very underrated hero and very huge power spike with level 4. Oh, beautiful trample. Land has been used. Lourdes. Looking for a chance, Witch King, quite tanky, forcing the Gondor player to get some um, towers on the field. Four power points in the bank for Mordor, he needs only two more power points for the Darkness, for the massive power spike. Mordor will be capturing the middle camp, but the question is, can you hold it? You see the Visa Plus against Drummer Troll, it only knocks him on the ground, but it barely deals any damage. Wedge Formation? Now, he didn't change to Wedge Formation. When you are getting targeted by the Easter Light, you want to change the wedge formation, which is going to, uh, you know, make the Easter Light to hit maximum two units instead of three units. Lightning Sword. 
Yeah, so tanky, dude. You see, Lightning Assault, one of the most powerful unit uh, attacks in the game, couldn't even hurt them. Four power points in the bank. Witch King has to be careful. And Mordor is building the middle camp. Industry has been used. Mordor will grow rich very, very soon. And three power points for Isildur. And Anorian, uh, Anarion, sorry, the Isengard player, has six power points in the bank for the Freezing Ring. It's a risky move from the model player, desperate move, because there are too many units inside the, you know, inside the castle. Dude, trolls are so crazy, you know? They can do anything they want, you know? They, imagine if they would be able to throw the stone ability against flying heroes too. They would be kind of making them literally to the best unit in the game. They destroyed the wall of the white city in a second and a half and you know what that's so big by the way because now the beast cannot be left alone empty land has been used from the modern player the trolls are charging but freezing green has been used the trolls have now no more leadership available nor do the gondor knights i don't know if they can commit but there is a siege works and he will very soon have the chance to get catapults on the field there comes the witch king but keep in mind that there is gandalf so with gandalf's easter light and a couple of shots from those combos the witch king is gonna be definitely taken down beautiful nice with a plus on your face son there is a gandalf but can gandalf approach this army that's the question i believe the camp in the middle will be destroyed right after this build up lightning sword will be cancelled will go on cooldown from the yellow gonda player and the camp from valium the model player has been fully destroyed now the Gondor Isengard team will get the chance to capture this. And remember, Gondor can buy this and build wells and statues. There comes the... Oh, he healed him, I believe, yeah. He healed him. No, he actually targeted the Gondor Knights. Very smart move, by the way. If you realize that you cannot kill the Gandalf, you want to target stuff that you can kill to get experience with Gandalf and also power points. Very important. Three power points after them. Oh, nice catch with the Lightning Sword on Witch King! Nice move! I mean, this guy's popping off with his Gandalf, by the way. Crazy stuff. He killed and catched the... That's not the easiest thing in the world, especially against this kind of level of players. They are very strong players, by the way. And catching somebody's Witch King like that is pretty respectable. Uh-oh, uh-oh, but I, I don't want to jinx you. He's going to he's gonna Easter Light him. Yeah, he got chunked. Because the Alvin Alliance also shooting all the time. Level 3 Furnaces are trying to defend. And Gandalf is looking for a chance. Nice. Try to dodge. But he still got hit by the, by the Visa Plus. Gandalf is getting chunked. And I believe heal is on cooldown for both the Gondor players. Now, I mean, is he the rest of the heal? He can eventually finish him off. Where is Gandalf? But he has Easter on cooldown. Now he has the available. I think he should just go now and try to kill him. Because he's taking so much damage now for no reason. Level... Eat Gondonites. He's gonna commit fully on the Citadel. Trying to destroy it. Heal is gonna be coming coming in clutch. Gandalf is back to full HP. So won't be killed by the Easter Light anymore. But he will get chunked. Where is the Lords? Lords is so far away. Where is the Lords when we need him? The Citadel has been destroyed. He will eventually get the chance to hit him with the Easter Light. Oh, heal, 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 heal. Okay. Now you Easter him. You Easter him. Is he gonna die though? That's the question. Yeah, he's dead! And this Gandalf is getting level 9. The purple gonna play a saving the day. And Isengard will not be destroyed. The problem is, Isengard has not that much money anymore. He has a couple of units, but every single one of them is badly damaged. The combo has to be sent all the way to the to the to the camp or to the castle rather. Um to get the regeneration around the well. And I believe he lost the Lord, that's why the you know the gonna play was able to do the, such aggressive plays with the Gandalf. And Mordor will be capturing the camp for the second time. Isengard going for the devastation, which is good for now, but it will delay your Balrog later on. But he needed the money. He needed the money to rebuild the base, to revive his lords, to eventually make more army very soon. And he needs to, he needs to be fast. Because the Gondor player is ready and your Freezing Green is gonna be not active anymore. So never borrow me and never farm me, that's kinda disappointing. <laughs> what this Gondor player could be doing is going for the Siege Warks, for the Trebuching, or going for the combos yourself. Like, Siege Wars would be nice, you know, that can crush down the enemy combos, and or you go just for combos yourself, you know, combos from Gondor with Boromir eventually, with the Drummer Troll leadership, Witch King leadership, Gandalf leadership, Eye of Sauron leadership, you can 
literally one shot Ganna from the opponent player in a second. Freezing Green is available, but you know, the Gonda player doesn't give Isengard the chance to get back into the game. And time is what he needs, but time is what he doesn't get. Beautiful Sonic, uh, not Sonic Song. <laughs> Beautiful Visa Blast. Almost level 10 Ganna, by the way, that's pretty lit. I like that. In the meantime, Isengard is trying to recover. He has two combos, doing nothing, chilling. I think he's trying to revive his Lurts, yes sir. Level 6, 1100 is needed to revive the, the captain of the Urukai. And this guy is very dangerous and super strong. Ganna is going to be revived very soon from the yellow Gunner player. Mordor has just too much money. He was giving one of his farms to his ally. And double siege works coming up for the Mordor player. So double siege works, um, that means catapult spam. It sounds lame, but I think that's what you need. Because the rain is countering, hard countering your leadership system. And that's what the Mordor faction is based on. You need leadership to be strong. Ganaf is diving in a little bit too deep. The combos are just running it down for no reason. There comes the Easter Light to kill one of the level 2 trolls. But there are too many trolls in a choke point like that. Your outnumber advantage doesn't mean anything. Witch King can now do his stuff. Ganaf level 10. War of Power is strong, but not very effective against trolls and drummer trolls. Not even against the Witch King. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. Almost level 10. All point wise, we have actually... A very tight situation, Isildur has the chance to go for the for the Eagles. You know, he has the power points for the Eagles. And Anarion is up to two power points after the Freezing Green and Devastation, which, by the way, will be available once again. Now, he missed this time. It would be kind of crazy if he can land it for... And he used the Cripple on the Witch King, which chunks him a lot. But you gotta be careful about the Gandalf. You wanna save your Cripple for Gandalf in a ideal world. And Latino, the yellow Gunner player, is almost around the Eagle's point. Eagles, definitely very strong. One of the best summons in the game when it comes to kill heroes. Like Ganalf cannot withstand the Eagle damage. And will we will only need to hit two hit two times with one you know each Eagle, two hits, and Ganalf is gonna be dead. <laughs> Pretty much. Eagles kinda crazy damage. Even against, you know, beings like Balrog, for example. Very close to level 10. And darkness available, but again, darkness can be countered by the freezing rain, which, by the way, is on cooldown. So, so if the motor player waits a little bit, in I'm saying like a minute, and then using darkness, that's going to make those condenites from his ally incredibly strong. Isengard suffering. He never got the chance to recruit Saruman one single time. I mean, the vestige has been used, yeah. And that's gonna give him a great amount of money, industry too. Like, PowerPoint-wise, Isengard and Mordor, they don't lack in the com in the in the economy department. You will always have the chance to boost the money income. Um, but, you know, you cannot inv use them over and over again in one minute. They have cooldowns, obviously. And you upgrading one battalion of the combos between Uruk and Crossbowman is just too expensive. Uh-oh, you don't want to leave them like that. We have water power now for the purple gunner player. Will he use it? There is a Gandalf coming on foot. The eagle's coming. What is happening? What is this Gandalf doing? Gandalf, what are you doing? He's trying to get mounted as he feel for the Gandalf. <laughs> the power of the eagles, I'm telling you. <laughs> Okay, I mean, the trolls are gonna die too to the eagles. There is literally nothing from the... Um, there is literally nothing from the Mordor and Gondor team that can deal with the eagles, besides towers. So, the Witch King is being chased on, but he's microing with the Witch King. Attacking and targeting, that means when you're attacking something with the Witch King or Nazgul or Eagle, it flies way faster than normal moving. So, if you are being chased from an enemy Witch King or Nazgul or Eagle, you wanna target something. So they will never be able to close the distance and get, you know, get to you. Very nice micro from the model player, but I think, yeah, it's not enough. And Witch King has been killed. That's a long time you need to invest to revive him. Uh, yeah, it's for free, but it takes like nearly four minutes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, heal has been used to save the Gandalf. Can he get away? Heal is on cooldown. He needs the assistance from his ally. His ally has to move to not lose the Witch King. To, to not lose the Gandalf. Now the combos will get the chance to shoot. And if they shoot with the statue around them, they will hit like a truck. 100% more damage leadership you will get from it. Which means double the damage, you know. And Gandalf was able to survive. That's huge. 
In the meantime, the Citadel is gonna be taken down. The Eagles, they are still around. They will eventually get the chance to kill the Lords. And they will now once again chase Gandalf. Gandalf is gonna turn and e study one of them. It will one shot, by the way. I mean, e study one of the most powerful single targets in the game after the Erowin from Legolas. If Erowin lands on one single target, it deals more damage. But, you know, e study cannot be missed. It's not a skill shot, it's point and click. So it's very easy to be to be landing on anybody, even Chunk's buildings. So it's the best ability in the game, by the way. Single target. Be right for the glory of Gondor. Right for the glory of Gondor. So the Gandalf, very unfortunate, he got back from the graveyard. And then, for whatever reason, he was on his foot. I believe he kind of got bugged. Um, and then the Eagles could finish him off in like two seconds. I mean, it's kind of like a... Like a Awkward situation for the Gondor Isengard team. Yeah, the scan of his level 10. He's incredibly strong, but in reality, the War of Power doesn't really do much. Okay, you see Vetch Formation countering the Easter Light. Six power points in the bank after the Eagles for Isildur, the purple Gondor player. And Anarion is up to six power points after the um, Rain. So he needs like 14 power points for his, uh, for his Balrog. And... This gonna player needs around 7 power points for his own EOD. And Valium, the model player, needs around 11 for his Baldrock. I'm losing my voice, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I'm screaming all the time. Sorry for that. Um, Gandalf is scary, but he has cooldown. So, Easter Light, very strong, no doubt. But it has, like, a really long cooldown. And you can kind of play around it. That's the only way you can effectively... Hurt a Nazgul or a Witch King. Yeah, true. The Lightning Sword can also be uh, killing a Nazgul or a Witch King in a second, but you need to land it. It's a skill shot. So you can try to dodge it. It's easy to be dodged, to be honest with you, if you pay attention. He's trying to kill the catapults. I think the player's getting kind of a li little bit exhausted. Nice catch. Holy guacamole. Nice catch. This purple gonna play is Ildur is on point with his Gandalf. Very nice Ganov Micro is the MVP of the game. Very good. But this guy is also now his Ganov on the field. He's gonna try to right click on the Ivza Blast. Uh, Eagles are still on cooldown, but it's gonna be available sooner from Isidur than from the other, go other Gondor player. Lords is on the field. You gotta be careful. You don't wanna get crippled. Too much leadership. Darkness, Eye of Sauron, Ganov. They are, you can see them, you know, shining bright like a diamond. They're glowing incredibly hard. They will slaughter everything they touch, pretty much. And Isengard has nothing to answer that. Lourdes doesn't look uh, doesn't look for a chance to cripple. He is kind of sleeping a little bit. The Witch King even giving leadership to the, to the Albin Alliance. So they are also very, very strong. Uh, we get the plus 10 because of the pillage from Lourdes. And Gandalf cannot approach as, there is, as long as there is a Lourdes on the field who will, you know, shut you down. I think we are just waiting for the cooldowns of the Eagles. The Eagles are available, but using Eagles now at this point is going to be kind of risky. This Ganoff is looking for a chance to go for a juicy Zap Blast. But there comes the Eagle as an answer to that. He has heal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he has heal, and I think all he gotta do is run. Yeah, he has archers on the field. He's gonna use heal. Can the Eagles hit him one time? Oh, close, but not close enough. Oh, you see, the Eagles got literally one-shotted. And the <laughs> archers getting level 5, both of them, from killing one Eagle each. Because there is just too much leadership. Drama Troll wasn't even nearby. If Drama Troll would be nearby, they would be level 10, by the way. Like, I'm telling you, the combat experience, you need to, you need to understand. You get 100% from the Eye of Sauron, and 200% from the Gandalf, 200% from the Drama Troll. That's 500% combat experience you will get. So basically, you kill a Lumber Mill worker, you get level 10. You know, that's kind of busted. Okay, Gandalf is trying to kill the catapult, should be able to kill it. Um, I mean, he needs to, you know, kind of dodge all the time. Uh, this Gandalf is going to be healed up all the way to full HP. And now we have a problem situation. Because now the yellow gonna play has the own eagles available. So, yeah, you have, you have heal, but if, I don't know. The, the thing is, Isildur, the mortal player, is very close to the EOD. There is a huge force with the Witch King leadership, but that comes to Freezing Rain. That gives you the chance now to commit and trample down those arches, no problemo. 
Without leadership, they are archers and they are weak against, you know, trample. Almost 10 power points in the bank. Yeah. Now here's Water Power. The Eagles are coming to kill the Lords. The Lords is going to be killed and that means Gandalf can do whatever he wants. Uh oh, be careful with this Gandalf. He's going to use Lightning Sword to catch him. Yes, he catched him. He's going to use heal, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Lightning Sword keeps damaging. It's the strongest single target ability in the game. I'm telling you. Why nobody's believing me? Yes, he has Water of Power. He will be using Water of Power to kill the enemy Gondor Knights. Every single one of them is going to be killed from the Purple Gondor player, by the way. He lost to Gandalf. He lost all his horses. There comes another EOD to kill the army, but Gandalf is going to get in safety. Unfortunately... We have not gotten the chance to see the Water of Power one single time from the Purple Gunner player Isildu. He has been playing a crazy game, but I think the problem is that the Isengard player was out of the game since the last 10 minutes. He couldn't recover, he couldn't get and find his way back into the game to get a strong army to push. He was being the one, like a child, being raised a little bit from his ally, protected all the time. The EOD is coming in clutch, Rohirrim special summon, the power of Gunner in lead game with additional summons like crazy. The full commitment on the base and that should be the one push to rule them all and that should bring the victory to the gondor mordor team what a game dude i mean um even though it was looking good for the gondor isengard team from time to time but i think in reality the mordor wasn't really ever in danger zone you know he had always the time of his life you know he had the full untouched base and for that reason credits to the gondor player who was buying enough time for his ally to get to the strong point this kind of player was playing out of his mind with the Balrog, uh, with the Gandalf, I mean. The best Gandalf I've ever seen, actually. Popping off like crazy. Killing Nazgûl with the Lightning Sword, Witch King. Killing the enemy Gandalf. Killing Eagles. Getting all the way to level 10. Keeping him alive until the very last moment. And even if he would be able to survive, it wouldn't change too much. Because what is about to come is just not stoppable. And the Isengard player will be defeated first, Anarion. It's a tough name to be pronounced, to be honest with you. <laughs> but that's going to be it, boys. And yeah, GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. What a crazy performance from Gandalf, am I right? I mean, I don't know. Like, he lost the game, but I don't care, you know. He was on point with his Gandalf. He missed, I believe, only like one or two lightning swords. He had like a crazy win, uh, hit rate with the Lightning Sword against Nazgûl and Witch King, which really isn't easy to be landed. So great performance. Again, if you enjoy, please you know make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.